Hello and welcome to African Farming. My name is Batavilia Morutwani and today we're going to be talking about African Swine Fever or ASF. In studio with us we have Johan Kotze from SAPO. Johan, welcome. Nice to be here. African Swine Fever, what is this disease? What are the typical symptoms you get in a pig and also how dangerous is it? China gave us a good kind of blink on how this thing can work and how, how it does work to a certain extent. The first thing is I think mortality can be up to 100%. And I always say it's a bye-bye. The moment you find out that you are infected with ASF, um, it's disaster. And the reason for that is it's a clumsy virus. It's the biggest one in the animal kingdom. So it's a, a very big virus. Uh, they, they do not have, have any vaccine for it. Uh, so if you have the virus, the only way to do it is you need to maintain it. And the way you maintain is literally to cull the, the infected animals. And then what you do is you protect the rest of the herd. People don't get infected by the virus. If a pig is a, a carrier of the virus, it won't do any harm if, if you eat the meat. To protect your herd in South Africa and to protect the pig status in South Africa, that's why we're so, so, so prompt in dealing with ASF. The other thing is, the, the potential of spreading is so great. That's why you, you need to be as fast as possible because it's spread via the, the movement of people and pigs. That was my next point. Let's say I'm a small scale farmer and I have five pigs which are infected with this disease. What is the process going forward? If you're a small scale farmer, there's some simplistic things you can do to help you with biosecurity. One thing is shoes. Don't utilize the same shoes that you use inside your little piggery as what you use when you go outside and visit some other farmers, number one. Number two is disinfections. So if you have a little foot bath where you put disinfectant in and you can walk through it and go into your piggery, it's a way of make sure that you're not gonna get your, the, the African swine fever. I think one of the, the greatest things we need to deal with uh, is auctions. Now auctions itself, might not be the evil, but the evil is we do not always know where it comes from. The guy whom I bought my pigs from, how do I know the health status of that pigs? Do I know the person that sold the pigs to me? Do I know where it comes from? Maybe it is out of an ASF infected area. So it's basic things that we can do that's gonna make a great difference. So my take is I think COVID taught us a lot. I didn't wash my hands and start sanitizing because our state president said so. I did it to help myself. So African swine fever is exactly the same. Biosecurity is not for somebody else, it's to protect your herd and protect yourself. Now, what is SAPO doing in terms of helping small scale farmers when it comes to education of this disease? Because the last thing I want is to lose 100% of my livestock. That's just, that's not gonna fly. So I think we've put a lot of time and effort into training. We have a, a training center, the Bainsfield Trading Academy, where we do practical training for a week, which is extraordinary because you can go into a piggery and you live there for a week on the premises and we, we teach you how to work with pigs in the piggery. And I think there's a lot of focus on biosecurity and the way to farm uh, in such a way that you, you make sure that you secure and you secure your own kind of asset. I think the other thing that we do as SAPA, we, we run some awareness campaigns where we have a simplistic flyer on, which is in a comic version so even if, and we have seven or eight languages we do it in, but let's say for instance, not even your language. It's so simplistic to go through the comic, you would even understand by just looking at the little pictures. Radio campaigns is a big thing, and I think a lot of people are benefiting out of it. You need to create something in here that people take ownership of their picks. To say, I need to learn more, I need to understand something more. So you can push a lot into this space, and I think government is doing a lot. To, to create awareness, but it needs to start here. Earlier on, you mentioned China, and you said they lost a third of their pig herd. Um, what effect will that have if that happens to us here in South Africa? Firstly, I think it's disastrous because uh, um, what we need to understand, small scale farmers are functioning in a little community, which is a, an economy. So, and it's normally peripheral. So if you take it out of that community, you, you, you literally put that little community in poverty. So we may not and we must not underestimate the value of small scale farmers and the role they play in little communities. Okay, so you ask me what would happen? Let's say there's no more pork. All of a sudden there's a greater demand for beef, for chicken, for fish. 
What China did was China disrupted the world. So because they're a world player, 50% of the total sour population in the world is in China. When they lost that herd, they disrupt the world of pork all over the world. So it's about exports, imports, it's about where certain feed goes. Can you imagine how much feed they consumed? just in the pork industry itself, how much grains went to, to China. So that was a major disruptor in the world. Johan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. Please remember to log on to hashtag African Farming or AfricanFarming.com for more conversation. And remember, we farm better together.